Hi, hi, everyone. Hello. It's that time of month where you get to see my face again. <laughs> Wee. Alrighty. But yeah. Hi, everyone. It's episode 21. Episode 21. 21. Let's go. We are making it. Get hyped. I know. We're It's going. We're doing we're things. Gonna, we're going to get to triple digits before we know look it. Look at us <laughs> staying on top of it. I think March is our, our year anniversary coming up. I'll have to go check. But yeah, so episode 21 of Nerd Out and Chill. We've only had an actual podcast name for a couple months now, but look at us go. <laughs> Here we are. And I do digital art now, so we're going to have a logo anytime. It's going to be great. <laughs> Things anytime. are happening. Um, but hi, guys. Welcome in. Thanks for that shout out for Dupree. If you guys aren't following him, you should be. Thank you. What are you playing next now that you finished um, Forsaken? Forspoken, not Forsaken. Forspoken. I Forspoken. I don't know. I gotta kind of decide. I'm kind of like wanting to do something a little different because I've been doing the whole like Final Fantasy RPG like continuously for uh, probably over a year now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with like that, but I can understand wanting to do something different. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've got like one. I, I'm towards the very end of Horizon, so I'm debating on just finishing that on the weekend offline. Uh -huh. And I have the that collection that dropped for uh, Mass Effect, the one, two, and oh. three edition. And I've only played three, and I don't remember if I finished three or not when I was playing it. So I was kind of thinking to go like a little off the normal RPG Final Fantasy and do all three of those games. That's a great idea. Those so, are great games. I might be doing that. They are well the, the only other option that I have aside from that is um, uh, the Strangers in Paradise. <laughs> More Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. More Final <laughs> Fantasy with a mix of Dark Souls and I don't know if I want to do that. So. <laughs> I'm like, no, maybe. Like, yeah, it's so funny, too, that game's been out for so long, and I've yet to get to it. Yeah, it's, um, I get it, though. It's like, it's like a, it's like, I think it's a mood thing because of the style of game it is. Because yeah. it's like, oh, I have to be in the mood to have my ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> I think that one has a difficulty selector, so I'll probably just put it on, like, normal. So you can just <clears throat> enjoy the story. <laughs> Yeah, enjoy the story, have a little bit of combat fun, but nothing, like, too intense. Yeah. I was playing Forspoken on hard, and I tried the final battle, like, three times and died. And I'm like, I don't want... I have, like, an, I have like 45 minutes and left before I need to eat and get to the podcast. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, fuck this. I quit the battle, put it back down to normal, and I was like, well, we'll just beat it on normal. I was like, I beat the entire game on hard, the final <laughs> boss, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I'm done. I want to be done. And so I just turned down normal. Beat That's it first amazing. Try. Good <laughs> job. Good once. job. Well done. <laughs> like, done. First try. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. Oh, you know, shoot. You really do have to be in the mood for like a, a challenge thing. Mm -hmm. like, or the grinding and all that. And it's like getting into those games. It's like I'm not going into this preparing mentally for a Souls game. Like this right. is a fantasy game, not Souls. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> but they they Souls, often they often intertwine. Lately, Man. yeah, I feel ever since like probably like Dark Souls three, we started seeing more and more games come out. So with many that style or incorporating the hard like get good style, which I don't really mind as long as like not every game is like that, or they at least include like the difficulty selector. Mm -hmm. So. We have an option to make it like a normal game if we want, if we're not looking for that. Because I would get so tired of games if every game was just Souls, Souls, right. Souls. I'm like, oh right. my god, <laughs> I'm not buying any games anymore. <laughs> like, if this is they're all going to be like, no, no thanks. <laughs> That's no fun anymore. Yeah. yeah, I actually need to go back to Elden Ring and try it again now that I've had almost a year away from it. I got stuck... Not really stuck. I just got frustrated. I was like, I feel like everywhere I go, I'm just not good enough and I'm hating it. I, but I put like 45 hours into that game before I was like, ah, step away from it for a while. 
It's definitely, there's a lot of areas that they do, that they put in there where it's like, you're not supposed to do it yet, well, and you're supposed and to come back to it. That's my issue with open world games like that, though. That's why I prefer the open linear um, where yeah, it's like where it's, the enemies progress with you throughout. Yeah, this. where it, it is more linear, quote unquote, but it still feels pretty open. Like, yeah. like I really enjoyed the way Dark Souls Three was set up. I understand that it's quote unquote linear, but there's still a lot of opportunity for exploration. Um, exploration, you know, Dark, Soul, Dark Souls Three, um, Bloodborne was like that as well, and that's just I don't know. That's just easier for me. I have a really really hard time with stuff that's as open as Elden Ring because then I just it get really I just end up in places that I'm not supposed to be <laughs> yet and I just yeah. die and get frustrated and I'm like, like I it, hate this. <laughs> it's kind of got a direction for you. Like if you follow um the yellow uh the whatever the bonfire things or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they have like the the little leading trail that comes off of it that points you in the direction of like where you're supposed to be going. So you kind of super stay general. Away. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like go in that direction. You'll and, eventually maybe get to yeah, where you're supposed don't to go fight next. The things that are that are killing you. <laughs> well see and oh so, okay, so for example though, like not even for example, that's not even the right phrase I'm looking for. But <laughs> what well, if you're gonna do that you know, if you're going to put that in the game, if you're going to put a general direction in the game, why make it that open anyway? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's whatever. I'm not, I don't hate people. the game. I don't hate the game. I just reached a point where I was frustrated and needed to step away from it for a while. So yeah. I have. I don't blame you. Maybe I'll go back to it later this year, but I have a pretty big docket this year of stuff that I want to play. Yeah. So and some of them are extremely like the uh, Boulder Skate Three. That's gonna be that's huge. That's gonna yeah. That's gonna take a, that's, like you you're gonna have yeah. to mix things in, but that'll be like a primary ish game. Yeah. <clears throat> when we um when we reviewed games and we were just like doing trailers, did we look at Rise of Ronin? Do you remember? If not, you should check it out real quick. I don't think we looked at that one. Um, Let you should look see. it up real quick. Okay, hold on. Let me and watch. Rise the of the Ronin. Uh, it's R O N I N. Yeah, Rise and of. Then Rise of. It sounds like something I would have looked at. Yeah, I don't remember it. I don't know if it was just announced recently or not, because it was just like it just popped up on my PlayStation. And it's coming out in 2020, or it's scheduled for 2024. And I know we reviewed a couple things by Team Ninja, but yeah. I don't remember if this was one of them. I not. don't know if this was one of them. Hold on just a um, moment. Um, but I looked at the trailer, and like I think you'll like it. Okay. I'm going a, I'm to a put it up for us to watch. Hold on. Um, Actually, Jackie, tonight I would normally be playing Fire Emblem, yes, but tonight I'm going to play Final Fantasy XV because I haven't been able to the last two weeks, and I will be playing Fire Emblem on Sunday. So I will make sure to do the update before Sunday. Thank you so much for letting me know, just in case we were playing, because then I could get that update going while we were talking. Thank you, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Let's do this. I'm just going to make it so they can't see our faces for just a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll just talk over it. It's fine. Give me a moment. Um, plus, what am I doing? I love doing this on the fly. Window capture. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to turn, I'm going to pause this music, and we're going to watch this trailer that Dupree has recommended to us. Let's take a look. I mean, it sounds like something I'd play, and I like Team Ninja. I, I think you'll like this one. Oh, look, it's Japan. I already like it. <laughs> yeah. even an era of Japan I'm pretty familiar with. I want to say I've seen this trailer, but it... I don't know if I have. Ooh. 
Ooh, that guy was handsome. Oh no, you guys aren't getting sound. My bad. Hold on. I fix. I fix it. I fix it. Hold on. Rip. Hold on. Rip. We have to watch the whole trailer oh, no. again. Darn. We're about to get to the good part. <laughs> Darn. Thanks for letting me know, Jackie. Uh, here we go. I fix. I fix. We good. You should get. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I forgot I didn't have just desktop audio set up. I have it like set to specific programs. Oh yeah. <laughs> You've got the fancy stuff. I do have everything all sorted out. Only for the podcast though. Everything else is kind of <laughs> I'm still working on getting everything else fixed up. I hate seeing games like this this early though because I want it so bad right now. <laughs> Ooh, the wigs. That's cool. <laughs> it's a glide around, right? As your blades carve a new future. Dude. Heck, yeah, that looks like sick. <laughs> right, I will I absolutely so play bad. this. <laughs> it looks like so much fun. It's a combination of so many games. But, like, oh, man. Really reminds me of Ghost of Tsushima, but with kind of, like, almost, uh, um... Uh, Neo feel. Mm hmm But, yeah. Console exclusive next year. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I will definitely keep an eye on that one. <laughs> Sweet though! <laughs> that one looks so good. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that looks awesome. Let me just change things back a little bit. Uh, things are all skiwampus. This is what happens when we do things on the fly, guys. But you know what? That's like so much of our channel, though. Like, <laughs> like we have yeah. a schedule of things we're going to talk about. Have we talked about any of them yet? No. And that's a-okay. We always get to what we need to talk about. Eventually, we'll get there. <laughs> it comes up. Sometimes we start with it. Sometimes we get to it. <laughs> but yeah, that looks that looks cool. I absolutely will uh, be keeping my eyes on that one. Yeah. It reminds me of that other... There was another, another one that looked really, really cool that's also like... Oh, yeah, no, I remember a... we looked at that one. Yeah, I'll have to go back and look at our trailers. Because, yeah, there was a really, really cool one that I was like, ooh. But it's, like, Chinese-based. Yeah. Yeah, so similar similar feel, though. Also looked really fun. But, yeah, cool. I'm glad. I'm actually, part of me is really glad that's not coming out until next year. Because <laughs> I... too many things I... coming out already. Too many games I'm this year that I'm time. like, <laughs> Too many things. I knew they were gonna make Assassin's Creed Samurai Baby. I mean, that's yeah, that's another feel it has, Shrey. It's like very, it's like Assassin's Creed. It's like Neo. It's like Ghost of Tsushima. It's like all these things that kind of feel they've been meshed. And I don't know. Looks good. I'll play it. <laughs> like, yeah, it, do it does look good. Definitely, it's one that I I definitely want. Yeah. Uh, was it the Wulong Fallen Dynasty? That was one of the... I That might have been the one. Wulong Fallen... That's... Nope. Wulong Fallen. Let me look at... I just looked up uh, upcoming games and that's... I think one. this is one I looked at. I don't think it's the one I'm referring... Maybe it is this one. Oh my gosh, is this also Team Ninja? <laughs> this is um, this is one of the ones we were looking at, yes. I don't know yeah, if it's, it's the Ninja one. Team. I don't know if it's the one I was referring to. But anyway, all the Asian-based oh. <laughs> games that I'm looking forward to. Um, 
So yeah, how did we even get on this conversation? Oh, what you're gonna play next? Mass Effect, the Mass Effect uh, Legendary yeah, Mass Collection. Effect. Yeah, I'll probably play that. Nice, nice, cool. And you've only played three, right? You haven't played one and two. So those would be yeah, no, I never played first three. playthroughs for you. Yeah, one and two will be brand new playthroughs. I don't know anything on them at all. Nice. Um, and I'm not. Um, I'm not sure if I finished three. I know I, if I didn't finish it, I got really close mm. to the end. If I didn't. Nice, nice. I I can't say anything. I've never played any of them. I had friends. I have friends that really, really, really love Mass Effect. Um, a couple of people that play in the the streamed VTuber Vampire the Masquerade game. A couple of those players like super, super love Mass Effect. Sly and uh Scooter. And I remember I remember the third one being I liked it a lot. It was really good. Um so I'm excited. And I've heard it, like, great things about that good. specific edition, so I'm sure you, I'm sure you'll have a great time. I mean it should be I always good. like should be good. finding a new game for a blind playthrough because it's always it's always an experience. Right? Super fun. <laughs> always a good time. Yo. Cool. Well. We can move on to our anime. <laughs> Fire Emblem and Gage just released Camilla. <gasps> Yay, Camilla! I still need to get, I need to buy the DLC. I'm waiting. I'm waiting like a check or two. To get some of those extra characters that I'm really looking forward to. But I just got my girl. I just got my girl Lucina, guys. And I'm so hyped. If you weren't there the other day when I got Lucina, I was there was excitement. I kind of I, I hate it. the internet for that. You kind of hate the internet for that? Because it allows companies to do DLCs instead of just releasing a full game. It's fine. It is a full game. It is. These well, are just is, extra characters additional. that yeah. you could get. They're not... They're not integrated into the story the way that the characters that were already included are. I just um, feel like the company are money fine. hungry. Well, of course they are. They're corporations. Crazy. That's what they're there for. Hello. They already make enough money. <laughs> <laughs> you and I know that, but, you know, <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> they it's just got to make the moonies. You don't need them to play. It's a choice. Yeah, you don't have to pay. It's, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly. You don't well, have to get know them. We but... want them. Exactly. And we will play them. Exactly. And we will get them. But like... my my good girl, my good girl Lucina is an integrative part of the story, so that's great. I love that, and I was so happy to get her finally the other day. I was I was dying <laughs> a little bit. Um, finally. Yeah, I was like, ah, ah, my girl. <laughs> <laughs> that is one that I do want to get to, um, is the Fire Emblem one. I don't play my Switch as much, though, as, the, uh, as my PlayStation. You might play your Switch more if you had Fire Emblem in Cage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, Fire Emblem. Nah, just get, it, just get it when you're ready for it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it till you're like, I'm ready to play this game. Yeah. That's why I didn't get Dead Space Remake yet. Because I'm like, I will play this, but I'm not ready to play it, so there's no point in me buying it yet so i wouldn't say i would yeah i wouldn't buy it till you're actually ready to play it so that's my opinion on it but i am really enjoying it i'm gonna hold my judgment until i'm done with it to decide whether i like it as much or more than um three houses um as much as i love three houses my favorite is is still awakening but that could change who knows? I I still wish that Nintendo would just port over all of the DS and 3DS Fire Emblems to Switch. I would pay for them That'd all again. Cool. I'm sure I lots of like people would. Hard. I don't feel like it would be that hard either. I don't even want them to be prettier. They could look exactly the same. Right, just I just want the them. <laughs> Prefer the DLC, cover all games, increasing their prices another 10 or 20. Right? Exactly. Like, just just bump the game up 10 or 20 bucks and just have everything included. I agree, Jackie. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. <clears throat> Switch games are cheaper than, like, PlayStation and Xbox games anyway. So, if they just bumped them up 10 or 20 bucks, they'd just be the same as everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway. What was I saying? 
Oh yeah, Fire Emblem. And the fact that I wish that they would just port over the new, the old ones, it wouldn't be that hard. And people would spend money on them. That's basically free money, Nintendo. Just saying. <laughs> I wish... I, I kind of wish Nintendo had a console that would, like, be compatible with the Switch. So, like, you could take it... Like, kind of like how Steam had their has their deck where you have, like, PC games, but you can also take the deck and go and still play, like, all the games that you're currently playing. I mean, that's what the Switch... Which is I'm, I, can, oh, I, I, I want something I'm that confused is by your statement. Oh, I see. <laughs> I want something that is a little bit higher quality, and because the Switch is like they kept, they really kept the Game Boy quality. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, speaking of Fire Emblem Blazing Blade, will be coming to Nintendo Switch in a sense. So here's hoping the rest will be moving over soon. Oh, cool. Which one is Blazing Blade? I feel like they put out an old one on the Switch. I got it a couple of years ago and I haven't played it yet just because of my schedule. <laughs> I I have it so that I can play it and I will. I plan to play it on stream. Um, I don't remember which one it was though. I'd have to turn on my Switch and find out. <laughs> Lynn's the main character in that one. Oh, very, very, very cool. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I just got Lynn. I just got Lynn in Engage. So that would be awesome. I couldn't remember which one she was in. Um... But anyway, we, um, I was distracted by Fire Emblem, so. <laughs> anime! Okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's finally time to talk about some anime for the winter season because we're, we are caught up on the things. Uh, we were behind for a couple weeks, but that was mostly me, but that's because I'm busy. But you know what? It's actually okay to wait in big chunks because then we have more to talk about so it's actually all right we're actually we're watching four series this season which i think is the most series we've attempted in a season so far yeah i think normally it's only like two we only do like yeah one or two um but this this there were just too many good shows this season i was like oh no i gotta watch so much (laughs) well they've been pretty easy to keep up with too i haven't had any issues really yeah, I've just been stupid busy, so I got really far behind. But I got all caught up yesterday. So, uh, nice. let's talk about Blue Lock first. <laughs> I hate where last week's episode left off. Just saying. <laughs> the, man, it's like it's in the middle of the match. <laughs> I'm like, what the I mean, heck? it's a good you cliffhanger. Ended... It's a good cliffhanger. It makes you want to go back oh, to watch it. But man, um... like because we the two episodes before that they split a game into two episodes, and then now they've split this one into three. Like at this point, like ish and three ish. Um, kind of right? yeah, because I mean the last episode they did like the last five minutes uh, was the beginning of the match, and then this whole episode was the match. Yeah. But the progression of the characters and their abilities is just driving me insane it's like it's so good it's actually really good (laughs) each person is getting to be like this ultimate like player and it's like oh my god (laughs) like right when somebody evolves everybody else evolves right there with them and then it's like they're all trying to evolve again it's just like constant pushing who's going to be better it's really it makes it hard to like it's like who do i root for right there's a, there's a lot of people that i like like nagi i like him a lot but i kind of feel like his abilities never they don't really seem to have progressed they just kind of like he's he was at the top and he's still like keeping up with everybody and everybody's catching up to him he never he hasn't really had to be pressed well, too hard and i think a lot of nagi's improvement has actually not necessarily been in his skill but in his personal interest and involvement because if you remember when we first meet nagi he's only playing to play with reo like he doesn't care he doesn't care care about he doesn't care about soccer (laughs) he he doesn't (laughs) care about being the number one striker he's just like whatever i'm here because reo brought me not Um, until he he, um, and he met yeah he meets he meets um igacy and he's like hold up, you actually make me interested in this sport that I play really well but don't care about. I think he's my favorite character, is Igasi, because with him, he started out, like, so mediocre, and he's had to progress. And he's got, like, the ability to, like, 
take in somebody else's skill and combine it with his own, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, they actually made a really, really good point in... I want to say it was episode 14. When they fight, when they beat, when they beat that other team, um, and the one kid is like, you're a genius at adaptability. And I was like, ha ha, see, he's not yeah. an average Joe. That is his... Because he can tear himself down and that rebuild That is himself. his thing. He, he can adapt to whatever he needs to be able to do. And by devouring other people's ab abilities, which is what he has been calling it, he's adapting to the situation and improving in each game. And that has been really cool. He is a really cool, really cool character. I like him a lot. Um, I wasn't sure... You know, those first, like, three or four episodes, I was like, yeah, they were <laughs> He was kind of like a weak little, like, I was like, like I don't know how I feel corner. about I you. Um, I wasn't too fond of him either. I liked, in the beginning, I liked um, Nagi and um, the... Uh, what's his name? The red-haired guy. Um, Chigiri. Oh, yeah, I still love Chigiri a lot. Um, I'm glad that... Okay, so I'm both excited and upset that we're playing Chigiri and um his name starts with a K. I just always think Ichigo because he looks like Ichigo from Bleach just on steroids because <laughs> uh, he looks bigger than Ichigo. Um, Is that the red-haired guy? Yeah well the the orange-haired guy. The orange yeah. Orange. Redhead yeah. orange-haired guy. <laughs> so those are two out of my four like so, like, because I really love the main character, um, Isagi. And well, there's still one more team that's I really, behind, right? Well, there's, yeah, there's a few. And I I really love Bachira, who is the black and blonde-haired kid that they lost um, his team to that other forward, team. Right? Yeah, because they stole Bachira and then moved on. So, Bachira's yeah. in the next set. Um, so, I really like that guy. And then I really like the guys reversing right now. I'm like, oh no, who do I root for? <laughs> I'm like, and if and if Isagi's team wins, who are they gonna steal? Because all three members want to steal someone else. Because Isagi wants to steal Chigari, and um, Nagi wants to take uh, Rio back, and. Their, uh... I don't think Rio would go because at this point he's too angry at Nagi. I don't think he'll. He he wants it. to, but he wants to make Nagi want to beg back him for him. Yeah, like yeah. like he wants to be wanted by Nagi. So I feel like if if the team asked for Rio, then that, that he would go. But and then and then Baru, who we don't really like. <laughs> I don't like him at all. I, I don't. <laughs> I was so mad when they picked him. I was hoping he would pick the other guy, but like right. I knew he wouldn't because he right. already took his ability, so he's useless. Yep. Like, yep. You're you're a waste of space <laughs> now. I can use your ability myself. Like, I don't man. need you. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's sad, but and then Baru so is like, no, we need that big guy with the physique, and it's like all three of them want someone else. So what's going to happen yeah. if and when they win? Well, and the worst part, too, is that no matter, like, what happens, by the end of the show, only one person's going to win. So mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. I so. mean, so, and it's it's got to come down to the main guy. Like, he's got to be in, like, the final three, I'm sure. At least. But <laughs> is he going to be the one to win, or are they going to, like... Is he going to lose and then have to find a way back into Blue Lock in, like, or, season two? Or, yeah, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Obviously, I could... Mm. I don't know. But it's, like you, it... I don't want... I want the orange hair and red hair guy to move forward. And yeah, they, because we like them both. If they both. lose and they bump back down, they still have a chance to fight, to play again, to move forward back into the competition and all that and like go up and only one of them will be got or well th they could both potentially survive maybe but i don't know like if it'll really show us much 
on that content or if it'll just be one of those things where they lose they bump down and then like in the next stage we'll be waiting for like the final team to show up right. the team of four and it'll be like hey these are who's left and the other guys will get like a 10 second clip of you're you're eliminated and you're gone and you're gone yeah who knows who knows I will say out of the three that they're versing right now, uh, Rayo is my least favorite. I really don't care if he Yeah, I never cared about him from the moment he came in. It was like, I only care about Nagi. You can go away. (laughs) I feel bad because, like, he's he's obviously supposed to be there as part of the element with Nagi. But, like, I don't know. Nagi's the more interesting character, I guess. I mean, yes and no. Yes and no. But I mean, obviously, it's it's obviously written that way, right? I feel like Rayo was written to not really be liked, but maybe that's just me. Maybe I just don't like him. Maybe we're supposed to and we just don't. I don't know. I mean, I felt bad for him at first when Nagi left him. But then in the last episode where he got all angry and started throwing a little temper tantrum, I was like, all right, buddy, you can go. Right, like, I don't, like I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> you deserved it. <laughs> like, you forced him into it in the beginning. He never wanted to. And then you were going to act like this just because he wants to get better. Get out. Just go. Yeah. Go home. And it, it is crazy cool, though, that, like, because Baru is such a pain in the butt and refuses to be a team player it's still cool though that isagi and nagi have basically been able to catch up on their own versus yeah, the two, other three because the three other three because the other three have like they've got it down like they have they're a really good. really good team symmetry and they they're working really well together and i was like Oh, At the same snap. time, though, it's kind of sad that they're getting beat by a two-man team. Because, like, you outnumber well, them and you're still but losing. they're not really being beat, though. <laughs> They've just, they're, they're, t- it's, it's just even. But that just shows how good the two, the two really are. And how yeah. far Isagi has come. Because, you well, know, I think from it's, it's the get-go. It's all him, really. He's the one who's, I mean, Nagi's there, but he's being carried for sure like, well he's, he's like he's got the skill and he's ability like a to chess assist. piece he's like a chess yeah. piece because isagi has this ability this innate ability to you know put the ball in the right place basically um and so the other players on the field are really his chess pieces but he doesn't yeah. treat them lowly like chess pieces like he's no, at least yeah. <laughs> he's bad teammate like <laughs> someone else Bato. other one who's getting just thrown to you just sit there and do you <laughs> oh man but yeah anyway guys blue lock is actually pretty great i highly i, I like highly the first recommend five it episodes and you'll love it yeah you, after that you have like, to, it's so good you have to it's definitely one that if i hadn't given it a five episode trial like i do everything i would have been like meh like if i had only given it three episodes i'd have been out but you have to give it five five is where you're like okay this is actually (laughs) really cool that's the downside for me if i start something i have to finish it even if i don't like it oh i don't even if I don't like it, I'm just gonna, I'll, it'll be like a, a month from now, two months, three months from now, and I'll be like, I wonder what how that show ended, and it will bug me so much. I'll have to go back. I'm really glad I don't have that problem because like, my it's, it's life brutal. is too short to worry about <laughs> finishing stuff that I don't care about. <laughs> Thankfully, they're like 20 minute episodes. If I don't I mean, like no, it, I'm out. I'm sure that comes with a limit. Like it, if it was like Bleach or something that has like a thousand episodes. <laughs> I'm not finishing that if I don't like it. <laughs> There's right, nothing that's just in the too world much. that would convince That's just me. too but, much. Like, a 20-episode thing? Eh, it's not that bad. I also I really can, like I the new opening. The new opening for Blue Lock is really good. I... Did you even realize that uh, there's a new opening? No. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to it on the first couple episodes, and I skip it ever since. So I'm just like, next, go. I don't got time for you. I'm I watch things. it every time. It's not like Moda Sushi or... Yuri on Ice or Skate the Infinity where I have to watch the opening every time because I love them that much. But it's, oh. it's I I noticed it. I watched it for a few episodes because I was like, oh, I like this new opening. And I'll now I skipped them because the I was one. just trying to get through them. <laughs> but, um, cool. Well, next we're going to talk about Buddy Daddies. Which, actually, it's funny that I just mentioned Yuri on Ice. That's actually a really great 
uh, segue because the voice actors for Yuri Katsuki and uh, Yurio are the buddy daddies. Yuri Katsuki, oh, really? yep, Yuri Katsuki is Kazuko, uh, the the main guy. No, Kazuki, sorry, Kazuki, the blonde guy, and Yurio is the dark haired one, Ray. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I like the voice actors in Buddy Daddy. the The little girl is sometimes gets on my nerves with all the screaming and whining. I'm just like, I want to She's four. You, she's four. <laughs> you have to remember. You have to remember. She's four, and she comes from a parent kid. who didn't love her. Yeah. So when you take those into account, she's more tolerable. I think she's adorable as fu. But I totally understand that if I were in their shoes, I would be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to kill a kid. <laughs> she does a lot of things that are really cute. But there are, like, it, it's mainly when she does, like, the whining and screaming. That's what gets me. Every scene outside of the whining and screaming when she's in it, like, is super funny. And she makes me laugh. Well, and normally she's screaming out of happiness. Very yeah. rarely is she screaming Although, because she's unhappy. When she's... <laughs> When she's screaming and jumping on um, the dark-haired uh, buddy, he, that cracks me up. Because he's always just like, ugh. <laughs> but what I love about him is that deep down from the very beginning, he liked her. Yeah, he cares. He cares about it's her. It's cute. He, get, he gets worried when he needs to be, but otherwise he's like, ugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you guys don't know what Buddy Daddies is about, it is two hitmen. They're like mafia hitmen who accidentally get this four-year-old <laughs> because one of their targets is this four-year-old's dad, but he's never met her because it was with like some, it was just some love child that he didn't realize he had. His mother is like, sent the daughter away to go find her dad. Who sends a four-year-old away to go find their dad? Anime. It's the game plan. Anime. <laughs> anyway, point being is they end up with this four-year-old. So it's these two hitmen that are trying to be dads to this four-year-old and be hitmen at the same time. It's pretty I great. I was funny when they got pulled into the daycare and they're like, do you have any, like normal clothes can you like dress her down <laughs> it's like i don't even know where to buy stuff like that <laughs> like basically they're like you need to go to walmart <laughs> <laughs> go to walmart not coach not louis vuitton i know it's so funny it was that was pretty funny but it's really fun i'm really enjoying it um it's a good break. Yeah, I don't like, I don't really relaxing. know what to tell you. It, it is I mean it it's relaxing but stressful at the same time. <laughs> Cuz you're stressed out for them, but um it's sweet and I really like it and I'm not going to lie, my 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 BL loving heart might chip them. It's fine. <laughs> well, it's fine. Shh. I mean, who knows? Maybe secretly they will. <laughs> anyway, Buddy Daddies, guys. I recommend it so far. There are five episodes out. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, let's move on to Near, which is on hiatus due to the team <laughs> getting COVID. We're all sick. Poor guys and gals. I hope they uh I hope they get well soon. <laughs> yeah. But um so far, I mean if you've played the game, you're gonna be really familiar with it. Um, but it's really great. I'm loving it. I haven't played the game since it came out. So there's like stuff that I had forgotten that I am now remembering as I watch it. And now I want to go back and play the game, but I don't have time. I haven't finished the game. I started the game a while back and I never actually beat it. I, I don't even know how far in I am, um, but I ended up not continuing for something came out and then i've got the second one that comes after it too so technically so near automata is actually the second one oh, okay near um replicant is actually uh the one that came before I but think what replicant happened might be the one i'm playing but with what happened with replicant so 
11 years ago. <laughs> or more. More. I think it was more. I think it was 2010 is when we got near Gestalt here in America, uh, which was fantastic. And I loved it. That was my first experience with near. Near Replicant is basically is the Japanese version because... In America, for some reason, they gave us the story told from, like, we played the dad instead of the brother. I don't know why they felt like we needed to play the dad instead of the brother. Sometimes Japan thinks that we can't handle the same things that they have <laughs> and, like, we're dumb. And that's fine. That's valid. That's valid. A lot of us are dumb. Um... <laughs> We're not to their level. Remind me to tell you a story about that later, though. Um, so, yeah. Near Replicant is the original Japanese version that we finally got. So, okay. you're playing... That might be the one yeah, that you're I'm playing, playing, you're playing the brother problem. instead of the dad. Um, but, yeah. So, Near Replicant technically takes place before Automata. Mm -hmm. But so. I did like... Yeah, I think Replicant's the one I'm playing. I liked it a lot when I was playing it. I don't remember what made me stop, and then it's like I've been away from it so long. I think I remember I, I definitely... when you were playing it, actually. I remember you are yeah. like, yeah, play this game. I was like, cool. I definitely don't want to restart, because I know I did a lot. I just kind of need to get back in it and like get a refresher on the controls mm -hmm. and then continue and go forward. So, so you... I, we'll, we'll do that at some point. Yeah, Replicant's one of those things that I still haven't purchased. I want... But I haven't purchased because I know that if I purchase it, I will play it right away. And I have other <laughs> things that I need to play first. Really so I'm game. not going to buy it. it. I'm not going to buy it till I am ready to play it. Till I'm like, okay, it's time to focus time to sink in. <laughs> on Replicant. Here we go. And then the I'll, and then really I'll probably though. I'll probably play Automata again after Replicant just because I haven't played it since it came out. But yes, yeah. back to what we were saying. Near Automata, the anime is really good so far. The visuals are fantastic. A1 Studios has done a really, really great job with it. Um, the music sounds like it's just straight out of the game, if not at least composed by the same person. I haven't bothered checking. My bad. I <laughs> meant to check that before the podcast, but here we are. Um, it's, it's been really good, and I like it, and the story and all that has been interesting. I feel like it kind of jumps around a lot. Like sometimes I get a little lost, but I'm, I enjoy each episode and it goes, I feel like I'm watching for like five minutes and it's done. I'm looking to see if the composer for the anime is the same for the game. Uh, 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 uh. Dee, 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 dee. Nope, this is going to take a little bit more Googling than I want to do right now. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I just highly recommend it. It's really good so far, especially if you're already in Denier, you will be into this. It's, it's really crazy how, like, the first episode is, like, the first bit of the game T for T without, like, basically you're taking out all the fighting that you have to do as the player and like all the wandering that you do as the player, but it's literally just the first little prologue first chapter bit of the game. I was like, wow, yeah, this is the bit that I remember the most because I had to replay it a couple of times. Um, I don't remember what, f there was a reason, but it's definitely the part I'm the most familiar with. And I was like, wow, yeah, this is just the game, but anime. <laughs> which Basically. the game already is just cgi beautiful i mean the anime is beautiful as well it's just obviously it's not cgi but yeah there's only three episodes out for that um so far so while it's on hiatus now is the time to get caught up if you haven't started it because they're on pause so get caught up now while you can if you haven't <laughs> um but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to more of that. There are these funny little segments. I like the the puppet, the puppet segments that are at the end. They're trying really hard to explain the different endings. Like that's what the puppet sequences are for. But I think it's I can't decide if it's more confusing for people who haven't really played it or maybe. I think it if is. you haven't played it, it doesn't make any sense. I've watched them and like it 
It means nothing. To You're me. like, it's what like, is this happening? This makes no sense. It's just kind of pointless. Ridiculous extras. puppetry. What is happening? Yeah, I'm just like, all right, on to the next thing. Speaking of uh, different styles, though, speaking of the puppetry, there is a really cool um, So I really liked in the, s- the second episode is when they start doing this. Anyway, when they're talking about the history of the robots that want to learn. Like, not the ones that are just out to kill, but, you know, the ones that start, like, the big guy who starts planting the flowers. The guys with the yellow eyes as opposed to the red eyes. Um, I really liked when they talked about, like, the history of those. Because when they do, like, these little, like, flashback story moments, they're done in a style where they're, like, cardboard cutouts. And I thought that was really cool just because of the way it's done. And they actually do look like cardboard cutouts, but, but animated. And I don't know. I just thought it was a really unique, um storytelling choice and i like it yeah instead of just doing like a typical yeah it's really it's really artsy (laughs) and and i like it it was good it worked it worked for it it's a nice little addition yeah i liked it a lot but yeah near guys it's great it's it's pretty uh 9s is my my boy my good sweet boy i love him so much anyway feels there feels in that there are feels coming and there were feels are from the get-go i was like oh yeah feels this game has a lot of them so the anime is gonna have a lot of them too all right so last anime on our list that we have been watching is trigun stampede this is a really interesting one for i feel like for both of us to talk about because you have not seen the original trigun correct no, I've never heard of it. <laughs> See, and I have seen the original Trigun several times. The figure, before I so, met you, DBZ was my extent of anime. I know. Naruto. I know. <laughs> it's okay. That's okay. Those aren't bad shows. If they're going to be the only shows you were exposed to before me, then at least they weren't bad. <laughs> there are worse things you could have been exposed to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I want to go ahead and get your thoughts on Trigun so far as someone who is not familiar with the original. Um, I, everything I like watching the episodes, I like it. Um, it's been really good and getting like the little like tidbits on the story of the two little boys and coming down um, the the world being in like ruins is kind of interesting. The one mechanical bomb guy was insane that was intense i was like no (laughs) don't die (laughs) that was intense but it's been really good i almost kind of want to rewatch it because i feel like there's just so much going on and so much thrown at you from like the beginning to this to the fifth episode that it's like i kind of need to go back (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah um so as someone who is super familiar with the original, uh, first thing I'm going to say is I do enjoy it. I really like it. It still feels like Trigun. Um, I am sad because they took out one of my favorite characters in this version. She no longer exists. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> but if I want to watch her, I'll just go back and watch the original, which I have several times and that's fine uh this new retelling is really interesting i will say that the c the 3d the 3d the 3d cgi animation um actually works really well for this universe um with how like technical and whatnot a lot of the stuff is in this there are visuals that they have given us that there's no way they could have done it with classic animation um for example in episode i think it's the same episode as bomb guy so episode three um when you meet when we encounter knives face to face um and he's got like his insane like tails of blades basically tentacle blades and like the really big expand out and like slice up the mountain stuff like that wouldn't have been as possible without the cgi and i actually think it looks really good i know a lot of people were really concerned about that because well original trigon was animated in the late 90s and so it has a very different feel yeah but i think this animation style works really well for it specifically also with wolfwood's giant cross gun very cool 
with the with the three D animation. Again, that was a harder thing for them to animate back in the day, and now it's like really cool. I was like, "Dang, Wolfwood, you you cool? That gun is cool." I, the gun is really cool. I do like him. I'm kind of <laughs> glad I didn't. I haven't seen the original because then it's like I don't. Have, I'm not like going into it expecting or anticipating anything. I can just like watch it for what it is and enjoy it. Well, the no, nice thing. Like, I know that a lot of people are comparing and contrasting. Um, I've only been doing it from a like podcast point of view. As just a watcher, I'm giving it its best chance. And I'm not comparing it at all. Um, yeah. I'm like, this is this, and that is that, and that is how it shall remain. Like, why do like why why do a reboot if it's just going to be exactly the same? Yeah, there's got to be differences or changes like, to some extent, especially when it's you gotta do it. It's got to be a new, so drastic, like technology-wise, mm -hmm. kind of like Final Fantasy VII. Like the technology is just so drastically different. You can do so much more with it. I guarantee you, this is probably the way they wanted to tell it back then and show it, but they just technically couldn't do it with the limitations mm -hmm. they had. What I will say is really interesting. So I did look up. Um, cause I was feeling like, I'm like, I feel like with how quickly we're meeting some of these people and like how intense it's been already, I feel like this is only going to be half a season, which I'm correct. I believe it's only gonna be 12 episodes. Um, which makes sense. Cause Search. so the original, the original is like 25, 26 episodes. Hold on. So it's just going to end out of nowhere. Is... Like spy family. <laughs> um, gonna... no, cause I think it's only going to be. I think it's gonna I think it's just gonna be go 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 and then have a climactic ending. Oh, like they're gonna I they're I, gonna I, compress the twenty five episodes. I will be episodes. Okay, so it's twenty six. The original was twenty six episodes. And so what I mean by I, I will be really surprised if it's more than two if it if it's more than one season, just because of the rate they've been telling this story. For example, Episode one starts with you finding out that these boys are from space, that Vash yeah. and Knives are from space. In the original series, you don't find that out till like two thirds into the series or like three fourths or something. It's like a big, it's a big secret and it's a big reveal when it happens. <laughs> you're oh, like, wow. you're like, what? <laughs> I bet, I bet you, you start out this way. The the original would probably be a better pacing and not so much thrown at you. Like you, I because it's like I watch it and I feel almost <clears throat> like I need to rewatch it. Like I was saying, just because there's so much information. I bet you the original is probably such a good pace and just like you can soak everything in little by little instead mm -hmm. of just like, hey, here's the things to remember. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. But but yeah, it's been it's just been really interesting to see those differences, because another thing is, is like knives. We didn't even encounter knives till towards the very end of the series. And we've already had a head on encounter with him in episode three. So it's like, yeah. oh, Oh dang! <laughs> but yeah. Oh, we have a question here from uh, Neko Six Toes. How old were you both? Uh, how old were both of you, and why were you drawn to anime? Well, while we were, were recently saying Dupree, <laughs> before he met me a couple of years ago, he had only seen like DBZ and Naruto. <laughs> yeah, that Inuyasha, Digimon, like is very basic. But like, how old were you when you started stuff. watching these things, though? Uh, it was when I was a young kid, when I was, like, little in the 90s, so I was, like, four or five. Oh. Like, I was young. I mean... <laughs> I always forget. I, I, for, I forget. You... I'm only 31. I know, it's 30, fine. It's 30, fine. 30, 30, Shh, something, it's something fine. Like that. Um, <laughs> so just to show the difference, I'm 38 and a half. I'll be 39 in May. Um, I have been watching anime actively since I learned what it was, since I was, like, 12. Um, what drew me to it? I don't know. I just liked the... I mean, back then, I just liked the style of it. And, like, the storytelling was very different from most American cartoons back then. 
Um, my first, my first anime were like actively watching were like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, which is a pretty common answer, especially for people in my age group. Um, I, yeah, I was mostly drawn to just how different it was. It felt different. Um, the stories were more, you know, overarching big stories as opposed to most of the episodic stuff that American television was at that day and age. I know that they're getting a lot better. They have been getting a lot better in the last, you know, 15 years. American cartoons are definitely working their way up as far as that's concerned. But yeah, I was just drawn to the style and how different it was. I was like, this is really cool. And then I learned that it was, you know, Japanese anime or what we called it back in the day, Japanimation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I just, I, the more I could consume, the better. And that's why I was excited when I got to high school because that's when Toonami started being a thing and I could I could watch stuff like I watched Escaflone and Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. And um, those were really the two that I focused on. Um, um, Ronin, Ronin Warriors was on Toonami and I really, really love that one. Also known as Samurai Troopers if you're watching it in the classic Japanese. Um, and then... You know, Adult Swim was a thing, and that's how I was exposed to uh, Cowboy Bebop. And that really opened up to some really, really cool stuff as well. But yeah, I don't know. I've been into it for a very long time. Yeah, I like I was... to tell people I've been into it as long as it was hard. Like, it was hard to get a hold of when I got into it. So <laughs> I just remember watching Dragon Ball Z, the reruns um, of the first season back in the 90s on um cartoon network mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it would show like an episode a week and i grew up like watching it release consistently all like from um episode one forward and i got hooked yeah. and i've loved it ever since uh yes so my favorite thing about cartoon network back in the day was um sometimes they thought showing something out of order was fine or they would skip an episode <laughs> so i have two examples of this so ronin warriors i watched religiously every week because i loved the story again overarching story and this was like this is a 50 this is a 50 episode series so i was literally it took me a year we get to the second to last episode, which ends on a terrible cliffhanger, mind you. And this was me and my friends, my my tiny little cl cluster of friends that were actually into anime. Um, the next week happens, and what do they do? They start over. <laughs> they didn't air the last episode. I was like, like are you kidding? <laughs> so I would be so mad. This is in like two thousand or something, something like that. And the internet is still pretty young. And how do we decide that we're going to watch the last episode? We buy a raw. This means not subtitled. This is what raw means. A raw VHS copy of the final <laughs> episode. And our friend, who was our math teacher at the time, her husband spoke fluent Japanese. And so we were like, McKay, you have to watch this with us so that you can explain what's happening dialogue-wise. Obviously, we can just kind of watch it and kind of gather what's happening. But there might be things that we want to know what they're saying. Yeah, so yeah, the so final the, episode. So the point is, the point is that's that's like, that's what it was like being an anime fan in the late 90s, early 2000s is like, we had to buy raw Japanese VHS to see the end of that series because Cartoon Network was like, ah, I don't need to watch the last episode. We'll just start over next week. We're like, what is happening? And, and then, that was their way of getting people to buy the and, seasons. And the, Well, the seasons weren't even coming out yet. They weren't even coming out yet. Um, we, they, they did, those didn't start coming out on DVD till I had graduated high school. Like I was, I was out of high school for like a year or two when those finally started coming out, and 
they wouldn't be coming out in full seasons back then. They would be coming out one disc, maybe four episodes a disc. You'd be it's usually three or four, <laughs> and That's they'd be and they'd be like thirty or forty bucks a piece. For four episodes. Yeah, that's how <laughs> Dragon Ball Super is right now. I can't like to me that's insane. I'm like I can buy. Well, I think those entire... are at least. I think those are at least thirteen episode chunks. The um, well, if you do Dragon Ball Z, they are. But with the Super, they're only like four or five episodes. Um, Interesting. In a disc. Yeah, it'll be like it'll it'll say episode one through four, and it'll be like thirty bucks. But then you can huh. get the Dragon Ball Z one. You get like the entire season one. For well, of course, because it's older. Because it's, like, it's older. Dragon Ball uh, Z's been coming out yeah. forever. I won't buy Super <laughs> until it yeah. until they combine I'll the buy full Super season eventually. into like one when set, it's, yeah, and it's like same. thirty bucks. I'm not doing it. Like that's yeah. such a rip off. See, Jackie, yeah, actually you get it. That, that, You've got Yu Yu Hakusho that way. Jackie's saying that she got Yu Yu Hakusho that way. All all individual discs. I have some I have some older series that I that I bought that way. Just the individual discs. You'd get them once like every three to five months. So it would take you forever to collect a series, right? Yeah. And like, oh man. It was just crazy. It was just crazy. But but that's okay, you know? I loved it, and I was here for it, and I have very fond memories of how excited I would be when I found anime anything out in the wild, because back then it, it was it was terribly exciting. <laughs> and I'd have to call all my friends because social media wasn't a thing yet. <laughs> like, yet. guys, I'm at the mall, and they have like five different anime here. Get hyped. <laughs> You know, it kills me when I think about the old days when it's like, call me after nine when my minutes are free. Call me after seven when my minutes are free. <laughs> or like when you have to, or like when texting was by the word, you had to buy unlimited texting or it was like you had a limit of words. Yeah, Man. that you could send. And it was like a thousand a month was like 20 bucks. It's like, oh my God, crazy. Right, Jackie? Such like a, a long wait. Oh man. It was awful. And then if you had a longer series, it took so long. It took so long. Like, oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, oh. I remember the first either. time I saw a season box set. I was like, <gasps> I was like, this is the whole season. But also, you have to remember, a season box set back in the day was like a hundred plus bucks. Like that's crazy. They were pricey, and you do get sets like that nowadays, but they usually come with stuff. It's like woo swag. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say that season uh, season box sets have become much more affordable, unless they're a Fate series. If they're a Fate series, they're still expensive. <laughs> On sale. On sale. I got my my Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works seasons for 50 bucks a piece and that was on sale wow they they run a hundred dollars a season still just because of just because of the company they are tight moon everything tight moon does is expensive the i know people Mon monogatari series is still yeah yeah see there's just there's certain companies that put out series out there that they're like they're like we can charge an arm and a leg and people will buy them it's fine <laughs> Like if they're, they're crazy pay, people, but they're with you. money, and they'll buy it. <laughs> oh man, Whew. that was a good question. Good question, Neko Six Toes. Actually, yeah, that was a good discussion. Good discussion question because <laughs> it just takes me back to all the things that I've experienced through my more than half my life now. <laughs> like so much, <laughs> so much of my life. Um, it's like the first time, the first time I discovered anime conventions, it was just this mind blowing thing. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean there are weekends, weekend long events of thousands of people who love these same things that I love that get together and experience I things. I don't know what things. to do at, oh, at an anime event. I'd just be standing There's in the corner staring at everybody. The first time, okay, so I went, um, 
bought the entire Monogatari series, which uh, equates to about four or five seasons, cost me like twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. Great answers. I appreciate the passion. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. Um, what time is it? Oh, that passionate answer brought us over time. <laughs> awesome. I I love it. I love it. <laughs> um. I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I was going to talk about conventions and I will talk. I can get on that for so long. I, I'm i very passionate about anime conventions. I ran my own for a decade. I'm very, very passionate because of how they made me feel. I'll do a short version. Short version. Okay, so my first convention was actually not an anime convention. It was San Diego Comic-Con 2005. 2004. Sorry, 2004. Um, which... San Diego Comic-Con, if you don't know, it's, like, the largest media fan convention in the United States. And that was the first one that I decided to do. Not not, not because I was like, I'm going to pick the biggest one. It was like, I had a friend that was like, hey, my art teacher wants me to go to San Diego Comic-Con for a day. Do you want to go with me? I had literally just discovered what cons were the week before. And I was like, yes. Yes, I do. Please. <laughs> Sign me up. So uh, we only went for a day, but I just remember. So being from the era that I am from, you know, being an anime fan was considered super weird <laughs> for a long time. And being one as long as I have, I dealt with a lot of bullying and not having very many friends. So... Walking into this giant convention center with all of these people who are into, like, all things nerdy. Because that's what San Diego Comic-Con is. It's it's just all things nerdy. It's actually a very tiny portion anime. Um, I just remember walking in and going, wow, all of these people are like me. <laughs> Like my friends. I was just like my, <laughs> my people, people. Exa exactly, and it's like I was super, super shy up until that point, and it's like my shell just broke into a thousand pieces that moment, and I was like, <gasps> "What?" <laughs> and it was like the 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 extrovert was born just because I wanted all the friends that were into everything that I was into, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, and I'm very passionate about anime conventions because of it, because I finally had a place where I felt welcome and normal, like not normal in a sense of, oh, I'm the norm now, but it was like, it wasn't weird. I wasn't the weirdo yeah. <laughs> on the outskirts of and society. <laughs> so it was really cool. And that's why when I was running my own convention, a lot of people would be like, hey, why do you do this? Because you don't. You don't make any money out of it. If anything, you're out money. I'm like, that, that's true. And I'd be like, it's because people get to meet each other and make friends at these kinds of events. It's to help people feel welcome and excited. And like, that's what I did it for. And that's what I love about going to a con and feeling, feeling that energy of just everyone's equally weird. <laughs> it's great we all understand each other <laughs> yeah and you live in a great state there's some good there's some good cons there i haven't been to any of them but they're ones that i am aware of and i know that they are excellent you should go sometime if they're in houston i'll hook you up with some links <laughs> i know i know there's a couple in houston i'll hook you up but anyway guys We've gone over, which is not unusual. I think every other episode we go over, and that's okay. Probably. That's okay. Uh, it's just because we are we like to talk, and that's yeah. okay. We get sidetracked. <laughs> but guys, yeah. thanks so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to catch previous episodes, they are over here on the YouTube channel, as well as you know some previous gameplay stuff of mine i'm in the process of getting all of my god of war ragnarok up right now so that's coming if you missed out on that it's coming <laughs> i've got it all uploaded now i just need to make thumbnails so i can get it all up <laughs> but this was fun thank you 
But yeah, guys, we're gonna say I'm gonna do one more shout out for my buddy here, Dupree. If you aren't if you aren't watching him, oh no, we're not rating. We're shouting out. <laughs> we're not rating. <laughs> he's right, he's leaving. <laughs> I'll have to send them back to you. <laughs> like, all right, bring some your streams so I can rate you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you aren't following Dupree, you should be watching. You should be. He's a great dude. Obviously, I wouldn't have him here with me if he wasn't. Whatever. So she can ban me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, anyway, guys, we're going to say goodnight to Dupree, and then I'm going to take a short BRB and get things set up to play some Final Fantasy 15 for the night. I know that Wednesdays are normally Fire Emblem nights, but I haven't been able to play FF15 for two weeks because of life. So we're going to play that. 